Hey guys, Crypto Dad here, and today I'm going to run you through uh, the initial installation of the GPG for Windows software and the initial setup. So let's dive in. Okay, so in a previous video, I showed you how to download and verify the GPG for Windows if you were a first time user uh, because they take you through this, uh, they give you a lot of detailed instructions on how to run the verification process. But if you don't have the, a previous version of the software installed, there's no way you can do these verifications. Uh, so the alternate method uh, was to use a SHA sum checker, which we did in the previous video, and uh, we got it installed, or we got it downloaded. Now we're going to run our installation here. Uh, it's here in our GPG for Windows. Uh, like I said, please check out the previous video uh, where uh, we do the uh, check the SHA sum check to uh, verify the integrity of this file. So we're just going to hit uh, double click. This is the latest version. I would recommend you uh, go ahead and you know, get this. Okay, I like to tick the GPA here. Ah, all right, come on guys, let's start over. Let's go big. Big. So you can see what I'm doing, right? Okay, once again, double click. Okay, now well, maybe you can see what I'm doing a little better here. All right, so we'll click next. Now, uh, what I was going to say is uh, I like to tick GPA. GPA is a front end uh, user interface for the key management tool, which uh, it makes it, it makes it easier to wrap your head around what's going on. Click next, let it install in the default location. Okay, yeah, you can use Outlook. You can uh, encrypt files on your computer using GPX. You can use desktop. And you can do all kinds of wonderful things, which I've done in uh, many of my videos. I'm not going to run it right this moment. Okay. So now that we've got this thing downloaded, you'll see I got the GPA over here. I'm going to pin it to my taskbar. So I got a, a Cleopatra I'm not that crazy about. It's useful, but I sort of managed to get around all around it most of the time. Okay, so uh, let's go to the key manager, the GPA. Now, and then when we run this uh, for the first time, oh yeah, <laughs> actually uh, it was already on my computer from before, so uh, it just found all those keys that I had downloaded. Uh, but say, Levy. Uh, I had never generated my own key, so I'm going to do that now. This is going to be one of uh, the first timers here. So we're going to generate a key for our uh, our own signature. I put my name. Oops. Okay. Forward. That's an interesting one. Whatever happened to next? Okay. And then my email address, which is uh, we're going to use the crypto dad at gmail. Okay, let's go forward again. Uh, so I can make sure your new key once it's been generated. You want to create a backup now. Let's go through that. Okay, it's going to generate. Okay, so now we need to. Uh, create a passphrase and uh, we've talked about this at length in other videos this passphrase has to be pretty long um, it's best to use words uh, people it's been known that uh, you know a complicated password with a lot of special characters that's fairly short is uh, not as good comparatively uh, as far as you know someone being crack cracking it as just a long uh, very long uh, passphrase um, like um, I don't know Green Goddess in the Garden I think that's one of them that I mentioned it's something that you've uh, created that you can remember that's 
pretty long, you know, passphrase. So three or four or five, six words, okay, uh, very tough to crack. I mean, even, uh, you know, uh, the most, uh, uh, well, oh no, I shouldn't have talked too long, huh? It's unexpected. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so I lost it there. Yeah. Wasn't fast enough for these uh, developers. Okay, let's try it again. The crypto dad at gmail.com. Okay, so we won't talk too long about, yeah, we'll create the backup. All right, passphrase. a 90% quality. That was just a down and dirty passphrase that I uh, remember. Okay, so now it wants to uh, back this guy up and uh, best practice would probably be to put it on a uh, flash drive, you know, so it's not on your hard drive somewhere. Uh, let's see, there the default is my, I'm just going to go ahead and save it here. Oh, <laughs> okay, so it wants me to re-enter the passphrase that I just entered. It's a good thing I didn't choose like a 50-character passphrase. All right, so there, it just downloaded, or it just backed it up. Okay, so there, now I have my own signing key. Isn't that cool? Okay, it's got its own fingerprint. And uh, I can use it to sign my cryptographic messages. I can use it to encrypt software and do all kinds of cool things with it. And uh, we talked before about the fingerprint, uh, someone that I know and trust that I want to send encrypted uh, communications to, I would independently give them this fingerprint. And uh, they could go onto a server uh, where, uh, you know, I, I believe that I've, uh, now that I've created this, my signature is floating around out there on the GNU PG key server uh, for anyone to download. So I could say, um, you know, I want to send you an encrypted message and uh, it's been encrypted. And when they get it, they would just download my signing key and use it to decrypt the message and check the signature. Uh, and then uh, they, and after they download my signing key, they would want to verify that it is indeed my signing key by checking this fingerprint, which I would give them independently. Okay, so uh, that's long and short of it, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, learning about uh, cryptography and all of the cool things that you can do with it. And uh, if you like this video, give me a like. And if you would like to be alerted when I post new videos, subscribe to my channel. Once again, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon.